this video, I'm going to be reviewing Deep Run Roots by Vivian Howard. Vivian Howard is a chef in North Carolina who specializes in Eastern North Carolinian food. She has hosted the PBS television show, A Chef's Life, where she focuses on Southern cooking and teaching people how to cook Southern food. I haven't really watched this show, so I can't really base my opinion off that. Vivian Howard graduated from the Institute of Culinary Education in New York City in 2004. Later on, she went to go work at WD50, a gastronomy restaurant in New York that's now closed. Later, she tried doing a soup delivery business where she would chill soups in her bathtub. Eventually her parents convinced her and her husband to move back to North Carolina and start a restaurant there. When she moved back to North Carolina, she opened up the restaurant Chef and the Farmer in 2006. It's located in Deep Run, North Carolina. It made me realize that the title of the book is more than just a symbolic meaning. I really just thought it meant that her roots ran deep in North Carolina, but it's really the town that she's from and that she has roots there. Very clever by Vivian. She tried to locally source ingredients from around her, and about 60% of those ingredients are sourced from a 90 mile radius. Vivian Howard mainly just specializes in the food she grew up with, which is Eastern North Carolina food, a lot of Southern cooking. This book is similar to Magnolia Table, which I previously reviewed, but in my opinion, this book is much better. What I like about this book is the stories feel very personal and not as cheesy. I get a very specific glimpse on Eastern North Carolina and the childhood that Vivian had. This book wasn't written by a ghostwriter, it was all written by Vivian. So being about 500 pages, that's a commendable effort. You really get a personality throughout this book. The book is laid out in ingredient sections. So there's sweet corn, sweet potatoes, blueberries, cucumbers. It's all ingredients that Vivian grew up with in North Carolina. There's a good and bad about this because it's kind of interesting to see what you can make themed around one ingredient, but it's also maybe difficult to know what you want to cook if you haven't flipped through the entire book first and jotted down recipes you want to try out. So this is definitely a book you would sit down and read through instead of flipping through one night and then figuring out what you want to cook right there. All the personal stories she has have a sense of history to them, and they bring me understanding of the region she grew up in. I learned a lot about farm production, even tobacco production, and how she would get these ingredients from the farmers to a restaurant. Going through this book, there's a lot of recipes I want to try out. There's some that are very simple, like the chicken and rice stew, or there's some that are a little more complicated, like the hordes corn. This one's kind of crazy. You need 200 years of corn to make this recipe, but it's kind of a recipe that she suggests you make with a lot of people. So it's kind of like a party recipe, which is not really common in a lot of these home cookbooks. A lot of them are just you making them yourself. So I found that interesting that she kind of has almost an event as a recipe. One way I like how to determine if a cookbook is good or not is if it has the correct temperature for for chicken. This book states that for a properly cooked chicken, you have to have it as 165 in the chicken thigh, which is correct. If you have it at 165 in the chicken breast, it'll be overcooked. So congrats, Vivian. You passed the chicken temperature test. There's a couple issues I have with this book, though. It feels like there's some oversights in some recipes, like in the chicken stew, she doesn't say to clean the chicken. Sometimes chickens can have a lot of fat on them, and you really don't want all that fat in the chicken. Also, for one of the turnip salad recipes, she asks you to put the turnip greens in the salad, but usually you can't get turnip greens. It's a little difficult. So some recipes are a little trickier to make, but most of the time they're fine. Another issue I have is the baking recipes only use volumetric measurements. I generally prefer weight measurement because it's more accurate. I love any fruit cobbler, so I decided to try out the blueberry cobbler. All the flour and baking ingredients were measured in cups, so I don't know if it's exactly the recipe she intended because if you measure a cup of flour, it can differ on weight per person. It still came out really great. I haven't had cobbler like this before. It's got a lot of corn in it, which is really good. And it's definitely this recipe felt less precise. In order to make the crumble, you just get the dough and you just kind of pull it out and make cookies. She doesn't really say, use this kind of scoop. She just says, use your hand, pull a blob out, flatten it, and then put it on top. So maybe she's trying to go for a low key Southern kind of style, but I always prefer cookbooks to have very precise measurement because it just makes things a lot easier. Some recipes can be kind of long and like the banana pudding recipe is very long and laborious, but it looks delicious. I just wish she kind of planned it out a little better where things that took a while were at the beginning and then she kind of told you how to prepare it a little better. You kind of have to read the whole recipe and then plan it in your head on how you're going to do this cookbook. I wouldn't recommend this cookbook for beginners. It's fun to get a lot of ideas, but there's a lot of things she kind of glimpses over where as a more experienced chef, you might be able to correct. But if you didn't really know anything and you tried going in this cookbook, you might make a lot 
lot of mistakes. The photography in this book is decent. It's nothing stand out. Some photos look a bit gray, but nothing terrible. This cookbook won four International Association of Culinary Professionals Awards, one for Cookbook of the Year, Julia Child First Book Award, Outstanding Restaurant Cookbook, and Outstanding Cookbook in the general category. I do like this book a lot. It's definitely a very specific version of Southern cooking that you don't really see in other books. A lot of Southern cooking generally has just a very general, broad overview, whereas this one is just very specific on Eastern North Carolina, which I can appreciate. I love cookbooks on Southern cooking, and it's just great to see something so hyper-focused on a certain region. I really enjoyed this book. It gave me a lot of good ideas and a lot of recipes I wanted to try out. So far, the recipes I've had from this book are really delicious. And if you're a fan of Southern cooking, I do recommend picking up this book. I'm giving this book an 8 out of 10.